Mm. Arizona basketball gets another big time commit. You are Locked On Wildcats, your daily podcast on the Arizona Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. This show is brought to you by FanDuel.com slash Locked On. Check it out. All right. Arizona basketball gets a commitment from tra- uh, from Campbell forward Anthony Del Orso. An interesting uh, one. We have not uh, talked about this ton. This is not a name that we generally heard until, I don't know, probably about a day ago or so. So you might say, Mike, who's Anthony Del Orso? Well, thanks for asking. Anthony Del Orso is uh, out of Campbell uh, University. Or keep in mind, um, Cedric Henderson, our guy, went there as well. Thought, thought said was a fairly good player here at the U of A. But Anthony Del Orso averaged about uh, 20 points per game last year, about six rebounds. But, but very good news for the Spacers. He averaged about, he shot about 40% from three point range and took about four per game. So, it wasn't like one of those things where you take one and a half threes per game and we pretend that you're a good shooter. So that is obviously a very good thing for the Spacers. And honestly, joking aside, this is a very good thing for the University of Arizona. Now, uh, I do not believe, from what I've heard, I do not believe that this really impacts anything when it comes to the U of A or when it comes to KJ Lewis, Caleb Love. We are going to get to, to them in a minute. This is a depth play. This kid is clearly going to play. He's clearly good enough, but he's also not going to scare off Caleb Love or <laughs> KJ Lewis. He's not of that caliber. Again, he is good. He is not of that caliber. So we need to, uh, we definitely need to keep that in mind. Now, a big part of what he's going to be able to do, though, is shoot the three-point shot. Uh, we talked about it uh, yesterday. Who are the players at Arizona that, you know, who are the players that are going to be those three-point spacers? And, you know, don't really have necessarily a ton of them. And this kid should fit into that. If you watch just kind of some of his highlights, uh, he's got a good form. Not only does he have good form, he also kind of has a knack for the basketball. I mean, he's a smart player. Obviously, he's from uh, Melbourne, Australia, which is kind of an interesting little, uh, little addition there as well. But Overall, a pretty good fit, and I think with uh, this is somebody that was uh, prepared to go to TCU until basically about yesterday, and then Arizona uh, said, "Hey, you interested in coming? Uh, you interested in coming here?" And he said, "Sure," because Arizona is better than TCU. So we will uh, we'll see how this one plays out. But again, overall, I think this is a pretty good fit. This is a pretty good move for Arizona. He, he uh, you know. Uh, worst case scenario, he provides you a lot of he provides you a lot of depth, and we saw like we said, Henderson averaged 15 points, four rebounds per game at uh, at Campbell, and he was a, he was a useful player here at the U of A. This kid's a little bit better than that, and I think the hope is that he can uh, at the very least be a useful player and maybe fit in in uh, you know in kind of an even bigger capacity as he continues to grow and mature. Cause again, he's going to be a junior, so he's going to have multiple years, but a good, but like I said, a good, uh, a good fit for the U of a. And I think that he's going to play now. We're going to get into minutes here in a few minutes, uh, pardon the pun, but he is, uh, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm in on this. I like this, uh, like this move a great deal. And I think that this is going to be a good fit for the U of a and for him as well. Another shout out to Jack Murphy again, this, and again, Tommy Lloyd obviously gets a lot of credit, but you got to give Jack Murphy a ton of kudos because Jack Murphy continuously does this. He, uh, nobody really gives a ton of appreciation for what Murph does, but he is a uh, he is a wizard behind the scenes. This is another example of one of those. And like I said, I think this is a kid that is going to fit in very, very well here at the U of A. And not only is he going to fit in well, I think that he's going to be somebody that I think by the time he is a I think by the time he is a, uh, you know, by a senior, I think you could see him starting at the U of A. So we will see uh, again. Uh, kind of this one kind of came out of nowhere, but an exciting addition nonetheless. And. I think somebody who is a, uh, 
just a, you know, like I said, just a really, you know, a good, smart, heady basketball player. And, you know, so I know that uh, everybody wants kind of that next player. And you're looking at, uh, you know, if you go on some of the message boards, somebody says, why can't this be Dalton Connect? Listen, man, I'll let anybody, uh, anybody, I will not shatter any dreams because who knows, nobody saw Dalton Connect being that player either. But if this kid is half the player that Dalton Connect is, you will obviously feel very good about it. But this is a, like I said, this is a very nice kid for uh, Tommy Lloyd. And again, it just goes to show that people want to be at Arizona. Arizona wasn't even really recruiting this kid that hard. And Arizona jumps in. They're like, hey, hold off on that commitment for a day. Let's just, you know, let's see what we can do. And he's like, okay, cool. And then he decided that he wanted to back the A. And I think that's a big part of where uh, Arizona goes from here. So we'll continue to keep you in the loop on this one. But again, a nice little addition for Arizona. If you're asking me, and again, um, how many minutes is he going to play? I would assume you're probably looking at somewhere around 12 to 15 minutes. I mean, it wouldn't surprise me a ton if he plays a little bit more than that or a little bit less. I could totally see it. I could totally see this being the case either way, but it's a good, uh, it's a good move for him, Arizona. And they needed, like I said, you needed a couple players like that and you were able to get that. So we will, uh, we'll certainly find out where Arizona is, but Either way, good news. Anthony Del Orso is an Arizona Wildcat, and uh, we will hear nothing of that. Let me get this pen. So now let's get into some starters. Uh, let's get into some starters minutes and about how we kind of see every uh, how we kind of see all of this playing out. And I think a. Uh, you know, because listen, you know, there's only Arizona is going to have a loaded team this year. There's only so many minutes to be able to go around. And I think that uh, I think that he is a I think this is going to be a team that I think is going to be a team where you're going to have certain players that are obviously going to play 30 minutes per game. And we're going to go we're going to go position by position. Jaden Bradley is definitely going to play 30 minutes per game. There's uh, no doubt. There's no doubt about it. And he should because there's nobody else on the roster do, that can do what he can do. And I do think that um, I do think that uh, he is a he's a player that is just kind of irreplaceable on the team. No matter who, if you bring in another player in the portal, no matter who you bring in, there's nobody else like Jaden Bradley on this team. And we've seen this. So there is uh, there is that. And I do think that he is going to be a, I think he's going to be about a 32, 33 minute per game player. And I think he's going to be very good. Again, I think Jane Bradley, whatever you were to tell me about Jane Bradley, however good he's going to be, it would not surprise me in the least because I think that he is a, I think that he, honestly, I think he was a little bit misused last year. And not only was he a little bit misused, I think that he is a, I think he was a dude who is a, probably should have played a little bit more. And I kind of said that, um, I kind of, uh, I said that throughout the, I, I said that throughout the year um, that he should have played a little bit more. I think that, you know, some of the Kylan Boswell basically having to play no matter what he did, I thought was kind of a misusage of Jaden Bradley and, but Jaden Brad, but Boswell's obviously gone. Arizona is in a, a new a new tenure, a new era, and uh, that was going to be a lot of uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to be able to see what he can do. Um, now we are going to uh, we're going to talk about that, but I think you're looking at about 32, 33 minutes per game. Now another thing that I want to talk about too is Yahoo Finance. Yahoo Finance, everybody. Yahoo Finance. All right. Behind every great investor is Yahoo Finance. We all know this. And not only do we all know this, we know that he is a, that this is a, this is something that everybody is using and they're using it for a variety of reasons, but it is taking off. It is very, very cool. We all like Yahoo Finance. So again, check it out. Every great investor, Yahoo Finance. And again, this is something too, that's really kind of taken off. Not only is it taken off, I think that um, I think that Arizona, or excuse me, I think that this is going to be a situation where uh, I think it's going to be a situation where you're going to look back in a year and be like, okay, okay, I see it now, I see it now. We're going to find this one out, and not only are we going to find this one out, we are going to be excited about it. So again, check it out, Yahoo Finance. 
Thanks for keeping it locked on Wildcats and making this your first listen of the day. We are now going into the other players that uh, on this team and what we should expect from a minutes rotation. Now, the very next one that we need to talk about is, is Caleb Love. We're going to go under the pretense that Caleb Love is coming back. Now, if Caleb Love doesn't come back, then we will obviously, we will. You know, those there will be more minutes to be had. Caleb Love's going to play 30-plus minutes per game if he comes back. Now, um, he, he was the Pac-12 player of the year this past year. Overall, I think he had a very good year. The problem with Caleb Love, though, again, is that I think he relied way too much on his three-point shooting, and I don't think that he got to the basket nearly enough. He needs to get be able to get to the basket, and he can get to the bucket. We've talked about this a bunch. I want six free throws per game out of him. I think that that's more than I think that's more than uh, fair, and I think that uh, I think that he can I think he can do that, and uh, I think that he is able to I think that he is able to. Uh, I think that he's going to be able to do just that. So again, we will uh, we will see. But he's going to play thirty plus minutes per game if he comes back as he should. I would just like to see him be more efficient. I do not necessarily see him playing in the NBA, but I do not care about that. I just need him. Uh, I just need him back. And if he's back playing thirty minutes per game, we are in good shape. Now, KJ Lewis. I think KJ Lewis is going to be about 27, 28 minutes per game. I do believe KJ Lewis is assuming he's back, assuming he's back. I do believe KJ Lewis is about a year away from playing in the NBA. And uh, I think that he would be very, it would be very, very smart of him. It would behoove him a great deal to come back because right now, what if you're like a second round pick or something now, granted, I know that I'm being a hypocrite because I said that I would take him in the first round, uh, at the end of the first round. But if you're not gonna, if you're not guaranteed to something like that, come back because I think he could be a lottery pick, and I think that he would fit in very, very well in the Big Twelve. And again, I think you're looking at about 28 minutes per game. These minutes are kind of non-negotiable, I think, because there's not a lot of other dudes on the roster that can really kind of replicate what these guys do. So those three players, I think you're looking at and you're like, yeah, they're not really coming off the court. Now, Trey Townsend is kind of the same, kind of in a similar situation. And then I think the minutes start kind of evening out, being divvied up a little bit in that I think with Trey Townsend, he is uh, – you don't recruit a player like him to come in and play 20 minutes per game. He could have gone to a lot of different places, and we've already seen, too, that he is a good, good basketball player. And one of the things that we uh, that is very easy to see is that he can get his own shot. So, again, that is something that we uh, you like and that he can finish. It'll be interesting to see what Arizona does with him, but he's going to play and he's going to play He's going to play a lot. I think you're probably looking at about 28 minutes per game from him. Arizona hasn't really, didn't really have a player like him in the front court last year that could just kind of do whatever they do, whatever he wanted as far as getting rebounds, finishing around the hoop. And you could say that, you know, Umar Ballo, leader of men was, uh, you know, that guy. And, you know, I don't know that you necessarily would be wrong with that, but Trey Town's a little bit different in that, he is a uh, he's somebody that we've seen him against the best competition in the country be able to get his and i think that that's what you're hoping for if you're tommy lloyd that he's going to be able to continue to do that and 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 i do think that you're going to see some i do think you're going to see some a little bit of movement per se when it comes to a little bit of movement per se when it comes to uh, uh townsend and being able to shoot the three we'll find out uh, defensively, probably not the greatest dude in the world, but I think you're also hoping too that, uh, you know, with, uh, Jaden Bradley, KJ Lewis, that, you know, kind of their defense will be able to help a little bit on the perimeter. We will find out, but Trey Townsend going to play a lot. Now, Mount Crevis, I think Mount Crevis, I like Mount Crevis a great deal, but I believe Mount Crevis is going to be more like a 23, 24 minute per game guy. And I am okay with that. And that is uh, something that uh, I think that Arizona fans should be uh, okay with as well. He is, uh, I don't know that playing more is going to necessarily be better for him. Um, I think as he continues to grow, it'll become better. But Arizona is going to have some other options as well. But Crevis, like I said, I think Crevis is probably good for about 12 minutes per half. And I think Arizona is going to be, I think Arizona is going to uh, go small at times. Obviously, you got Tobey Awaka coming in. Awaka is, 
you know, obviously we're going to get to Tobe Waka, but another dude to keep an eye on. But I think Crevis, you could probably pencil in for about 24 minutes per game. Probably, like I said, probably about 12 and a half, something like that. Now, the dude's coming in off the bench. We uh, Why don't we get back to Anthony Del Soro for a second? Like I said, I think he's probably going to play at 10 to 12, 10 to 15 minutes per game. And I think 50, actually, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, depending on the, uh, the outcome. He's not going to start. I'd be stunned if he started, but I think he is going to be an impact player. I think you're probably looking at somebody that's going to average about six, seven points per game. And I think he's going to be pretty good while he does it. So it'll now if he can do a little bit more off the bounce, if he is a real consistent knockdown shooter, then, you know, obviously that kind of changes the calculus entirely when it comes to that. We will find out on that one. But he is uh, so far. I think that's probably what you're looking at. Then let's talk a little bit about uh, Carter Bryant. I think Carter Bryant's going to be somewhere in that 17 to 19 minute per game role. I think Carter is going to be very, very good. And I think Carter is going to, uh, I think Carter is going to be the dude who, as the season goes on, continues to get better and better. Deshaun Bryant, uh, we, you know, we talked about him before. He is a, he's an awesome dad. He knows the game. He knows what time it is. And with the, uh, and with Carter and with Carter, I think that it's just, you know, bringing it every play. Bringing it every play is, I think, going to be huge for him. If he can bring it every play, he is going to be a very good player for Arizona immediately. Now, I think that his uh, upside, I think his upside is through the roof. I, you know, we talked about previous show. I think he's probably a two-year player. But, you know, be that as it may, I think that he will, uh, he's going to be more than okay. So we will, uh, but I think you're probably looking at about 17, 19 minutes per game. He can play the three, he can play the four. And I think you're going to see a little bit of that. And then I think the following year is really when he becomes a superstar at the college level, assuming he's still here. Who knows? Maybe he's on a different trajectory and he's already a lottery pick after his freshman year. We'll see. But with Carter Bryant, there is a lot to like about him. And I think that he's going to continue to get more minutes as the season goes on. Then the next one, Tobey Awaka. All right. Tobey Awaka. I like, you know, I like Tobey Awaka a great deal. Arizona, again, going into the Big 12, needs tough dudes. And Tobey Awaka is that. Uh, there's kind of a joke that, you know, he's going to take up all of his fouls. Good! Because, again, I think Arizona uh, Arizona has had, you know, Arizona needs, I think, some tough rebounder types. And I think that Tommy Lloyd is going to be very good with him. With uh, Rick Barnes, you could never really uh, look at Rick Barnes and say that this is uh, this is a next-level uh, this is a next level offensive player. Not only that, you uh, also see uh, you also see a guy who uh, you also see a guy that you know got a lot of rebounds last year. Was able to get uh, some points just off you know raw athleticism. And I think uh, I think that we are going to see another level. Of, I think we're going to see another level of uh, you know impact from Tobe Awaka. I think he's going to play about seven, 16 minutes per game, 16, 18, maybe a little bit more minutes per game. And I think he's going to get a lot of rebounds in the process. And I think the next year he's going to be one of the Arizona starting bigs. It was a really good move that I think that Arizona sold him on. And I think that he is a, I think he's a very good fit. You need, uh, you need players like him and that, you know, that to me is kind of that rotation. Now, listen, if Joson Sainon shows up, obviously that will be the time where you're like, all right, well, uh, you got to find 20 plus minutes per game for him, but that is a good problem to have. That is a very, very good problem. And it is a problem that I think most, uh, I think it's a problem that most schools would love to have. So there's that. Now, some of the other guys, uh, Jamari Phillips, Jamari Phillips to me is a total wild card. And we're going to get to that one in just a second, but first, first FanDuel, check it out. FanDuel. All right, here's the deal. FanDuel.com slash locked on all kinds of good stuff going on at FanDuel with FanDuel. It's fun. It's immersive. And the cool thing about FanDuel is you can go ahead and you can, uh, you can bet on games that you don't care about. You can bet on games you do care about. 
But FanDuel.com slash locked on has you covered in every capacity. That's why they're there. And again, I don't like baseball at all, but guess what? I like baseball if I got some money on it because then it becomes very interesting for me. So again, check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on. One of these situations again where you will thank me later. Check it out. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thanks for keeping it locked on, Wildcats, and making this your first listen of the day. I am your host, Mike Luke. All right, now, 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 let's talk about uh, Jamari Phillips. Again, Jamari Phillips got a world of talent. He can score from the three. He can score at mid-range. He can get to the hoop. He can do a lot of different things. I like his game a great deal, and I think it's easy to see why, you know, he's a – He's a good basketball player. Uh, he just hadn't played a ton this year. You know, he's been to a couple different high schools uh, and kind of in and out of stuff. So, you know, you don't really know quite what to expect from him. Now, if he comes in, he's fully engaged and he's ready to go, then, you know, I think that he could force his way onto the court. But there's also, you know, I think it also could be something where, you know, he takes the year to kind of just reacclimate and stuff. Um, and I always tell people this. There's nothing wrong with taking a year to get good. If that means in that second year you're ready to rock and roll and you're ready to become, you know, a real consistent contributor. You know, I get that a lot of people don't uh, a lot of people don't want to do that. I understand. But I think also that uh, we're in this day and age where you kind of got to look big picture and Tommy Lloyd obviously knows what he's doing when it comes to, uh, when it comes to players and whatnot. So we will, uh, we will see that, but again, I'm, I'm excited to see, you know, what he does when he hits campus, I could see him forcing his way into the rotation. I could also see him taking a year, but we'll, uh, we'll definitely find that one out. Conrad Martinez is not a bad basketball player. Conrad Martinez is a decent basketball player. I just don't know that his, I just don't see him necessarily being in the big 12, being that dude. Um, maybe in a year or two, but if he's having to play major minutes for Arizona, I think that's probably a little bit of a problem. So I think you're hoping that that backup point guard spot, you can either find in the portal or you can find it somewhere else. I don't know, but I think he is a, I think he's going to kind of have a Philly B type role where you're, you know, you're on the team, you're a good practice guy. You want to be there. I just don't know that he is ever going to be good enough to play in big moments, but that could be the case. Now, the other big man that I totally forgot about was Henry Vasar. With Henry, I don't know what to expect. I'd love to be uh, wrong on Henry, but I also just don't know that uh, Henry's going to be that dude. But there are things to like about Henry and that Henry can block shots. Henry can run the court and You know, a lot of people say Henry can shoot the three. So we'll find out about that. Lloyd's not bringing him back if he doesn't think he's if he doesn't think there's a possibility of him being good. That is one thing that Lloyd has done is he has shown that, you know, he doesn't uh, he doesn't necessarily uh, take players just to take players. So there is that. All right. On that note, though. Um, we're tomorrow. We're going to talk a lot of recruiting, recruiting, fun stuff. Everybody likes recruiting and you should, because it is a lot of fun, but we wanted to be able to just kind of talk about the minutes, where everything stands, where er everything is with uh, Arizona basketball and kind of the starters and talk about Arizona's latest commit, which is pretty cool as well. So we will, uh, like I said, but tomorrow we're going to talk recruiting, incoming players, what to expect, all of that good stuff. So, but as always, very, very much appreciate you all making Locked on Wildcats your first listen of the day. Going to uh, t- uh, touch again really heavy on basketball, spring football over, but then we'll obviously get back into football as well. But bear down and back the A, and as always, very much appreciate you making Locked on Wildcats your first listen of the day.